Hello, Chem 20s. Our lesson tonight is going to be on the combined gas law. So if we take a look at this, the combined gas law is a combination of both Boyle's law and Charles law, where there is a relationship between volume, temperature, and pressure if we assume that the number of gas particles stay constant, or we could also say that it stays fixed. So I want to remind you that, again, Boyle's law is P1V1 equals P2V2. And again, that's supposed to be memorized. And reminder that Charles law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So if we combine these together, and we'll notice that V's on top. So if we put, hey, T1 underneath it, and V's on top, so we draw a line, we put, hey, T2 underneath it, that's where we get the combined gas law. And that's what this law is. So it's a way for us to look at both Boyle's and Charles law together as one. So what I want to do for a second is just go back to my pointer device. You should already know what the variables are, but let's do a little review. P1 is going to be my initial pressure. V1 is, of course, going to be my initial volume. T1 is going to be my initial temperature. And then P2 is going to be my final pressure. V2, my final volume. And lastly, T2 is going to be my final temperature. Again, like the rules when we did Boyle's and Charles Law, we don't care what the unit is for pressure. Kilopascals, kilopascals, atmospheres, atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, millimeters of mercury. As long as they are both the same, units do not matter when it comes to pressure. That is also true for volume, whether it's liters or milliliters or kiloliters. As long as they're both the same, units in volume do not matter. The one that does matter, however, is going to be kelvins. And I want to stress that, that when it comes down to cal temperature, it's got to be in kelvins still. So we have to change degrees Celsius to kelvins by adding 273.15. Now, reminder in this formula, the amount of gas or the number of moles or quantity of gas is going to be held constant. So if we have 10 particles, we're always going to have 10 gas particles. Now, the neat thing about this formula is the combined gas law can be used to find Charles' law and Boyle's law. For instance, let's pretend temperature stays constant. If both temperatures are the same, we can cancel them out. Therefore, notice temperature is going to be a constant along with the amount of gas particles. Therefore, we're going to go back to Boyle's law because they're going to cancel themselves out. This is also true when it comes to, and we'll just clear that up. Let's pretend we've got, um, we're going to prove Charles' law again. If pressure remains constant, the whole experiment, P will cancel out. And notice we have Charles' law again. So these guys more or less prove themselves, which is pretty nice. So what I would like us to do is let's try an example. Can you please copy down the question, make a list of variables down the left-hand side, then unpause the video to make sure that you've done it correctly with me. Okay, pause the video now, please. So for me, a weather balloon has a volume of, so that's going to be V1, 52.4 liters. At STP, well, at STP, we have a pressure and we have a temperature. So my pressure is 101.325 kilopascals. And remember, that's on page three of your data booklet. And my temperature is 273.15 kelvins. And that's at the bottom of the mountain. It is then carried, my weather balloon is carried to the mountain's peak where the temperature, new temperature, is going to be negative 12.5 degrees Celsius. So again, we can't have degrees. We got to convert to match up for Kelvins. So we're going to add 273.15. 
and my new T2 is going to be 260.65 kelvins. And my new pressure, P2, in the question it says it's 52.7 kilopascals. We would like to know what is the new volume. So we are solving for V2. So you'll notice lots of numbers this time. So I have pressures, volumes, and temperatures. So we're going to use combined gas law. P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Again, we're going to solve for V2. So we want to get everything away from final volume. So to get pressure away, it's on the top. So when we cross the equal sign, he's going to go down. To get temperature away, he's in the basement. So to cross the equal sign, he's going to go up top. So my new formula is going to be V2 equals P1 V1 T2 over T1 P2. You get one mark for the two formulas. You need the memorized formula and you need the formula moved around. Now, I don't care the order you write the variables as long as all the variables that are supposed to be in the numerator are in the numerator, order doesn't matter. As long as the two variables that are supposed to be in the denominator are in the denominator, order doesn't matter. So let's substitute in. So we're gonna put down P1, 101.325 kilopascals. My volume is 52.4 liters and my T2 is 260.65 kelvins. On the denominator we're going to sub in T1 which is 273.15 kelvins. And on the denominator, we also have P2, which is 52.7 kilopascals. Now, I would like you to type this in. This is, you have to be very careful on your calculator how you type this in. If you're going to type this in one big step, then you need a set of brackets in your denominator. I hate relying on when do I need a big set of brackets, when do I not need. So, although I have a graphing calculator, I treat tend to treat these questions like I have a little baby calculator. So I'm going to type in 101.325 times 52.4 times 260.65. Enter. So type all the numerator, multiply them all against each other. I hit enter. So now I have a really big number. Divide by 273.15. Enter. Divide by again, because it's on the bottom still, 52.7. Enter. If you do it this way, you never have to worry about, do I have the correct number of brackets? Do I have them in the right spots? On my calculator right now, and this is where you should check, you should have the number 96.13771788. And of course, it's liters. Calvin's on the bottom, Calvin's on top, kilopascals on the bottom, kilopascals on the top. The only unit we have left is liters. So we're going to go back to the question. Three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. Always go back to the question. My answer is going to be 96.1 liters. You get, remember, your second mark for substituting in with all your units. And your final mark is for answer in correct sig digs, in our case, three. And of course, a unit attached volume works well for liters. So answer looks probably fairly good. Okay, what I would like us to do is, since I've done one question with you, can you please pause the video, copy the question, try the complete question, then go back and watch mine to make sure that you did it correctly. Please pause the video now. So to what temperature would you bring 20.5 liters? So that's going to be V1 of helium at SATP. So it's at SATP, so I look it up. 
that means my temperature is 298.15 kelvins. My pressure is 100 kilopascals. And we're going to establish a new pressure, so P2 of 137.0 kilopascals and a new volume of 15.0 liters. So we are trying to find the new temperature, so T2. Again, let's check to make sure I like my units. Liters, liters, kilopascals, kilopascals, kelvins, which means my answer is gonna come up in kelvins, that's perfect. So we're going to use P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Now, this question's a little trickier. This time we're solving for T2. And if you remember when we go back to how do we move a formula around, you cannot solve for a variable in the denominator. So the first thing you're gonna do is move that variable across the equal sign, which means it's gonna go upstairs. So I am now solving wanting T2 up here, which means I have to get rid of these three guys. So if T2 comes upstairs, P1 and V1 are going to come downstairs and exchange places, and T1 is gonna go across the equal sign to the other side. So my formula is actually going to be T2 equals, remember T1 comes up, T1 P2 V2 over P1 V1. One mark for the two formulas. We're now going to sub in our numbers. So we have 298.15 Kelvins times a pressure of 137.0 kilopascals times a volume of 15 liters. We're gonna divide that by a pressure of 100 kilopascals, and we're gonna divide it again by a volume of 20.5 liters. Reminder, you get a formula for subbing all that in. Liters are going to cancel, kilopascals are going to cancel. So the number in my calculator is going to come out in kelvins. So 298.15 times 137 times 15, enter, divided by 100, enter, divided by 20.5, enter. And my answer on my calculator is 298.87. Seven one nine five one Calvins. I go back to the original question. Three sig figs, four sig figs, three sig figs. So my answer is going to be in three. My answer that means this is going to round up is going to be two hundred and ninety nine Calvins. Now I have two more questions to do with you. They're kind of bonus footage. There's a couple tricks in them that probably will help you out in your assignment. So there is a second video for you to watch. So please, when you're finished this one, take a second, watch the second video. Again, this is a perfect chance for you to practice by pausing, trying the questions yourself, then checking your work. Thank you very much.